Hey, what's going on guys? It's Anton here. So we're back with a brand new video and we're going to go over the basics of JSON. So JSON is a data interchange format, which basically means you can use it to format certain data that you might have, say for example, in a database, or if you want to send it to a server or a client, you would use JSON format. It's widely used and it's language independent. So you don't have to worry about whatever language you're using to in order to use JSON. You just need to understand the concepts of it and how it works. So let's go ahead and create a new file. I'm going to call this data.json. So we can structure our JSON in two primary different ways. You can either have an object literal where inside this object, you have a bunch of key value pairs and I'll explain what those are in just a sec, but let's start off with a simple object and inside this object, we're going to specify a key. So this key is basically a unique identifier. You never want to have two keys that are the same. Otherwise you're going to have a collision. So let's just have this key mapping to our name. And you can see that we have this convention where we have the key wrapped inside quotation marks. And then we have a colon right after the key key. And then after that, we have our actual value that maps through this key. So whenever we reference this JSON object, we're going to reference name, and that's going to return the value of Anson. And we can have multiple different key value pairs, which can separate it with a comma. And that's just a simple syntax right there. So we can also map age to a number. And let's do a verified key and map that to a Boolean value. We can also have keys mapping to objects as well. So right now, it, this whole thing is just an object, okay? So let's say we might have an address and this is going to map to an object. And let's just say state would be California, city, Los Angeles. And then we would have a whole bunch of key value pairs such as postal code, phone number, uh, line one, line two, borough, whatever it is that you want. We can also have our keys mapping to an array. So we can have an array of foods and let's go ahead and put in some data, so pizza, ice cream, hamburger. I think that should do it for now. All right, so this is a simple structure of our data, and this could represent a user or a person, right? If we were designing some kind of an application, they might have this kind of data. So let's go ahead and create a new file. And we're going to read in this JSON file and then play around with it. So we're going to go ahead and use the require function. And we can just require the data.json file. And this will actually automatically parse this whole JSON as an actual object. So we don't have to do any additional parsing. We can just directly reference our properties as you can see right over here. So let me save and let me run my app. And there we go. We have a JSON object and it has all of our key value pairs. Now, if I try to override one of my keys, let's say I have a duplicate key. And let's change the value. Well, let's map this duplicate key to Zach. You're going to see right over here that there aren't two key value pairs with the same key. There's only one. And the latest one is overriding the previous one, which you can see right over here. Instead of it printing out both name and, and name Zach, it's printing out just one. Okay, so that's important to understand. But you never ever want to have duplicate keys in your JSON file. So we can also read in JSON using the FS file. So I'm going to go ahead and import fs.promises. And what I'll do is I'll call the read file function. And I'm going to pass in the name of the JSON file. And the encoding is going to be UTF-8. And since read file returns a promise because we're using FS promises, we're going to handle the promise by calling dot then. And the value is actually going to be a string. So it's not an actual JSON object. We need to convert it into a JSON object. And I'll console log the value just to show you what it actually looks like. But you're going to notice that we actually don't have the values being highlighted. Okay, this is all a string. And if we actually, if we try to reference some properties, you're gonna see that it's going to give us a bunch of string methods, which means that it's a string. So we can actually convert this into a JSON object by calling json.parse. And all this does, is it takes in a JSON string, a valid JSON string, and it's going to convert it into a JSON object. Okay, and now you can see we have are highlighted values. And there's also a method called json.stringify, which does the opposite. It takes a JSON object 
and it converts into a stringified version. So this is a simple format of our JSON. Now, what if we wanted multiple different records, right? Pretend this is some kind of database. Well, we can also have just a direct array of object literals or just individual elements like I showed you earlier. So I have an array, and right now this array only has one object. And if I were to run this again, you're going to see now we have an array of JSON objects. And this is also valid JSON as well. So let's change up our data. And let's maybe give it some different data. So... And for now, we'll just leave the foods, we'll put two. And let's do age 23. And let's do Texas, Dallas, steak, fried chicken. Okay, and let's do one more. Let's do shell 24, North Carolina. And we'll do sushi as well as fried rice. Okay, so like I said, pretend this is some kind of database. And it's going to return an array of objects. You can see we have an array of objects. And this is an array, so we can actually perform array operations. And let me parse this JSON. And now I can go ahead and try to find a user. So let's just say const user equals db.find. And let's say I want to find a user based on their name. So this find function takes in a predicate or it takes in a callback function and it's going to basically go through every single element and it's going to return the first element that the predicate function returns true for. So we want to find a record based on their name. So user itself is the object that we're currently processing right now. So we can reference dot name and we're going to compare it to Zach. And if that's true, it's going to return the actual element inside that array. So let's go ahead and run this. And now you can see that we have received our record from our quote unquote database. And there you go, we have a JSON object. So it's very important to understand JSON because you're going to be using it all the time whenever you're making client to server or server to server or server to client communications. If you're interacting with database, it's going to return JSON format. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So just to recap, JSON is just a collection of key value pairs or a collection of individual items. So a key value pair would be like in this object over here where each key is associated with a value and that value can be any type of data type. It can be a string, it could be a number, boolean, array, it can also be an object and a whole bunch. And we can also have an array of strings, array of numbers, array of boolean values and a whole bunch. So hopefully this video made sense and I'll see you guys in my next one. Peace.